Welcome to the Crucible. This is episode 12. Uh, welcome back, everyone. And today, I would like to welcome in my dear friend. As you can see from the picture, he is not only a champion, he's actually a two-time champion of Game of Thrones, another FFG game. It is, it is old Bruno himself, John Bruno. What's happening, John? Welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me, Tiny. I gotta say, how does it feel to be a card just out of nowhere? You're just like, hmm, this game looks cool. Wait a second, there's a card of me in it? Oh, man, the likeness is, like, amazing. I, I'm so so impressed by it. Flattered. <laughs> Flattered. Mm. I'm very much looking forward to the next expansion for Young Vibrant Grimes. I'm just assuming that's going to be uh, my description. <laughs> yes, exactly. They're already hang They're already alluding that you're going to be in the game. I hear, you know, you have a card mentioning Tiny. I know. It's on. It's on Dodger, and it says like, "Why'd you do that, Tiny?" And I was like, "Yeah, that seems like the perfect quote that they would have for me." So, I'm hoping it's me. Who knows? There's a, there's a lot of possibilities for Tiny. Well, let's let's cross our fingers that it's actually like scholar tiny grimes or something oh that would be the dream so we'll see i'm pretty sure old bruno made that quote bro said that quote i hope so that would have, it, unfortunately it's not it's it's credited to somebody else but um that that would have been really funny if that was the your your cards flavor text was like tiny what are the, what are you doing yes yeah, so it would be wtf tiny that's yeah, my exactly. yes uh, or or like read the cards tiny you don't know anything <laughs> that'd be good too all right, John. Well, welcome to the show. Uh, for anyone out there who doesn't know John Bruno, he is a legend of FFG card games. And John, I just want to ask you, what what drove you to Keyforge? You did. <laughs> okay, that sounds about right. John and I <laughs> do have this symbiotic link these days where basically any game time I have is spent playing with John, so we tend to play the same thing. We were playing Star Wars Destiny before having a lot of fun with that, and uh, and now we're exploring Keyforge. How much Keyforge have you said you've played, John? Um, geez, maybe we've had to play 100 games. Yeah. 100 games, but yeah, about around that range. I would guess you are the guest I've had who's played the most. A lot of my guests, I'm like, how many games have you played? And they're like, seven. I've played seven games of Keyforge. I'm like, okay, that's awesome. You're, you're well, new to the game, cool. We did play a few games, you know, we probably played about 15 to 20 games before the game even was released by taking PDFs of the game and printing them up and just using those proxies, basically. So that, that already gave us an idea of what the game was going to be like. But since it's come out, I've purchased almost 40 decks and have played at least half of them, like two or three times at least. So I would say I'm pretty close to 100 games. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed that I have a lot of decks. Um, and you have a lot more than I do, so I, I got to think I'm up to about 30 now, especially with, um, uh, there's a rumor that Santa Claus is going to be uh, putting some decks in my stocking. That's the rumor. Like I asked for them, I put it on my list and we'll see if it happens. I heard the rumor was cool, cool in your stocking. <laughs> that rumor is untrue, John. At least uh, I hope so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Santa's got my back. Okay. All right, so, John, we played in quite a few tournaments the last week and week or two. I just thought I'd talk to you real quick about what you've been thinking about the tournaments, what you think about the prizes, all these kind of things. I guess let's start with what's been your favorite format that you've gotten the opportunity to play so far? Um, I really haven't loved any of the formattings. I mean, I think that they're close to what the format would be, but if I had to pick... All I've played so far was Archon, where you bring one deck and you're playing best of one. And Sealed, which I also have done a couple times, where you're also playing best of one. If I liked between those two formats, I think I'll like Sealed the most, but I haven't really loved either format. I haven't really hated them. I haven't really loved them yet either. Hmm. Okay. Because they, they both have pros and cons. They both have things they like and I don't like about them. And I think if the person running the event took the things I liked about them, then I could really enjoy both formats. But I'm not excited mm -hmm. right now with either one. Okay. And at the Game Hub where we played, I think it was Saturday, the person was all ready to do best of three, but he wanted to do one deck best of three, and that would take, like, a long time. And we all kind of were like, eh, that doesn't sound that great. Um, I had the idea. I was like, hey, maybe we uh, 
use multiple decks, but then, you know, it's new in the cycle, and one guy's like, I only own one deck. I was like, well, that strat- that plan doesn't work very well then. Yeah, and that guy didn't own any tokens or anything at all, and um, that's also a very ruins some of the gameplay because then yeah. you have to provide tokens for him or he doesn't want to use tokens. He says, I'll just remember how much Amber I have, <laughs> how, how much to draw my characters. And I'm like, you didn't even play that card right. How am I do? How do I really think you're going to remember what everything is? Yeah. I've had some spotty issues with that as well. In one of the tournaments I played the first round, the guy says, I don't really know how to play. Um, I don't own any tokens. I just bought this deck for the tournament. And so I went into like steward of the game mode and he's like, can I make these take backs? And I was like, sure, man, do whatever you want. It's fine. Hey, make sure you don't forget to do this and that. And then uh, it turns out his deck was really, really good. And because I had shifted away from competitive mode, he actually beat me. And I was like, uh, okay, okay. I, uh, <laughs> I wish uh, I hadn't been like lured in by his lack of anything but but it happened that's fine yep um so I, I agree i've i personally thought the archon was fine um i have like five decks that are good i don't have any busted decks i went three and oh with one i think two and one with the other ones uh, but what i really haven't enjoyed is sealed i don't think best of one sealed as a very fun format at least for me as someone who wants to be sort of competitive um like yesterday we played a sealed event and one person had a really 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 good deck like bear flute with two bears two dust pixies key charge uh shadows with all kinds of awesome stuff and it was just kind of like okay then this will be fun the thing i think about oh let's just take sealed Uh, somebody gets a really good deck somebody gets a really bad deck that's terrible. I mean, you know, in terms of you're not going to have fun. I actually did play in a sealed tournament on Thursday night, and I had, I think, out of the so there was 12 people that played. Everyone, I, they opened up a brand new box. Each person got a deck from that box. I honestly feel like I, I had the worst deck by far, <laughs> or at least I, than all the decks that I saw that I played against, which I played three rounds, or the decks around me that I watched play. But even though I lost all three games. I didn't actually lose 3-0 in all three games. Two of the games went to time. And, you know, I felt like I fought the best that I could with my deck. So that made me happy that I played well with the deck. I, I mean, I, I don't feel like there was anything I did. Is it, When you go to a tournament, we've been playing card games for a long time. When you go to a tournament and you feel like your deck performed poorly because maybe that's on you. You made, you made misplays. You didn't... Um, you didn't put the right cards in to prepare for the meta. You did. There's things that you, you can do in a controlled environment when you are building a deck. And uh, even if you were drafting, and like Magic does drafting and stuff, you could choose the card you draft. And, but in a totally sealed event, you have no control over it. And that's a general truth for Keyforge. You have no control over it. Your deck is what it is, and you play it. And if you make good plays with it, you, you have a chance to be in the game. But... Like you and I have talked before, I always feel like every deck has a ceiling and floor. Unfortunately, some deck ceilings are still lower than other decks' floors. And, <laughs> and that just screws, you know, you have no chance truly to win. No matter, I mean, yeah. like I've always said before with Game of Thrones, I always felt like it was the, the car and not the driver. This time it's definitely the car. Somebody's giving you a jalopy and you're competing against, uh, you know, a Lamborghini. Yeah. You're, you know, you're not going to to win so that's the thing I, I did feel good about my gameplay but um i i knew i i knew from the beginning i had no chance to win the tournament and that's this yeah i will say last night though it seemed like you had a jalopy and you you outraced that lamborghini like i, I was looking at that game I'm like john has zero chance of winning this is a disaster and then you're like all right i won i'm like wait what i'm just looking at the board there's no way you could have possibly won well, that's one thing that I was able to, I mean, you know, gameplay or, you know, hopefully making right decisions. Yeah. The player does have a lot of control over the deck. I mean, you can give somebody a really good deck and they can play it terrible because they just want to keep putting on characters all the time instead of using the creatures on the board. Or they want to, you know, work with another faction when they should use, they have like five factions on the table. Use that one. 
um, people still are, you know, not figuring out how to play the game the right way, but, and you can hopefully see those holes and exploit them. But again, every deck still has, so I, maybe I, I worked with the ceiling of that deck and the other person took his to the floor and my ceiling was higher than his floor. I went up to the fifth floor. He took his, he went down to the fourth floor. So I think he went to I, the base. Like, you know. <laughs> I mean, he stunned his whole board of like 12 characters. That's called going into the basement. But he had one Mars character that did not stun. Oh. And I, oh. and, oh. and I, I had three characters on the table and all of them were stunned. So mm. he showed me. Mm. Okay. Uh, and I will say that's not to mock that player at all. Like there are a lot of people who are newer to the game, which is what's been so awesome about it. And it's actually what's been so great about sealed, right? Is that that guy was able to just walk up and be like, I will play. And we're like, awesome. Join us. Well, you know, it's, it's the thing I liked about it too. He was, uh, it, I really enjoyed playing him. He played, even when he said this, he goes, eh, I don't know if I really should do this or not. Let's see what happens. So it was kind of like, <laughs> that is one of the fun things you get to do with the tournament. Yeah. I'm not, I'm with the term with the game i mean even in tournament play nothing's so crucial it's not like you know we, we have tons invested in this thing right now you bought a deck you want to be able to play with it you know so he tried it he knew it might not have been the best play but he, he did it anyway and it ended up really backfiring on him but you know he still he still did it and he wasn't like totally blind to what was going to happen so right yeah so i mean you know it could happen but it, it, you know i I appreciate that he did it because I I like to play this game like that too, where yeah. I I want to do things, see what's gonna happen. I've noticed that you're very methodical, and you know you're a math teacher. That's how you think. This game more than any other game I've ever played with you. You make moves, and I and you audibly will go, you know what? Screw it. Let's just see what's gonna happen. I'm like, exactly. wow, this is not the John I'm used to playing card games with. Yeah, I play this one differently than than those games too i mean yeah i mean i'm still playing like i'm trying to do his best with best on the board but sometimes you have to make plays just to get those cards out of your hand or you have to make the plays to force your opponent to play stuff that they think they might have or you know you're just fishing for more cards in your deck it's not like other games where um you can plan things out more because you know you have three of a card in your deck and you haven't drawn yet your odds are pretty good of getting that card or you know whatever Sometimes you're fishing for that card that's at the bottom of the deck, and you know that might be the only card you have. That like I've got a, you know I've got a gateway to this on my my deck. I just got to get to it, and, and you know, yeah. If you don't get it, you know you might not win because you can't really deal with that creature. Yep. So, um, you know that's that's what's definitely different about this game. In other games, I'm putting stuff in those decks that I hope helps me in other situations. So I can you can't never control for anything everything in every game you play but you still try to make each deck the most competitive you possibly can this one yeah. you're handicapped by a lot yeah and like if you were building a deck around gateway to this you'd have three copies of it right you wouldn't be so desperate to find it because you'd have a better I shot at finding it correct yep all right um so we talked actually quite a bit about sealed and how we would kind of like to see that adaptive format where we you play one, you switch decks, you play one, then you bid chains for the third one. My question to you is this. It sounds amazing, but is that just too long for what Keyforge is? I kind of feel like Keyforge is that casual game that you just buy a deck off the shelf, you play for a couple hours, you go home. The format we're thinking of seems like it's like a five, six hour format. Well, how many tournaments have you been before that have been five or six hours? I've been to quite a few, so have you, you know? I mean, whenever I play Game of Thrones, their game lasts an hour. After an hour, they call time. Sometimes, again, goes another 10, 15 minutes after that. Yeah. I mean, it's like watching the – some games are, you know, you think you're almost at the end of the tournament, and then it's like the um, the last two minutes of a NFL or an NBA game. <laughs> Those last two minutes take another hour, it seems like, sometimes, with all the yeah. timeouts and stoppages. Um so, all right, here's the thing. The game is a very casual game. It truly is. I don't mind going to, like, even though Thursday night, <coughs> excuse me, I went to play in a sealed event. I felt like I definitely had the worst deck. I went 0-3. I fought, was in all three of my games, but I knew I wasn't going to be able to overcome what my opponent had. I had fun playing that, even though I went 0-3. I met some new players that I hadn't played against before, uh, that I didn't know before. And that was a lot of fun. Now, at some point, the competitor in me 
wants to start playing tournaments for competitiveness. If you're playing this game yeah. to compete, because you're going to be the best ever. You know, I need to be the champion of, of Keyforge. I need to design my own card. You're really not playing the right game, because that's not what this game is yet. I mean, when the, to have a true test of how good people are, you have to have them do one of two things. Number one, all have access to the same card pool. And two, decide which cards go into their deck. When you're not working with that, there's always a handicap on the deck. And until FFG really gets their chains rating working and the deck rating of cards in there, you know, to to impact that, that's what I don't like right now about the um, Archon format, just bringing a deck and playing best of one. I don't like that format because pretty much everyone's bringing their best deck. You know what that's going to mean? You're going to see the same boring stuff at every single, at every single turn you go to. Everyone's going to bring shadows because they steal. Everyone's going to bring... You know, um, uh, untamed because they make keys out of the regular cycle. I mean, you have those two things in your deck, you're probably winning. Someone wants to bring a, you know, I got this broken combo deck with the, um, you know, the Time Walker and the uh, Library Access and the, uh, I, I, I'm gonna, then I'm going to go to like shuffle my deck back in and then I'm going to play it all again and then I'm going to make, and at the end I made three keys. And what'd you do? Oh, you just watched me. Yeah, that was really <laughs> exciting. Yeah. You know? I'd rather go to the tournament and say somebody say, oh, I brought my Horseman deck. I'm like, great, I can beat that deck. Because Horseman deck are not really that great, you know, overall. They got some decent characters there. People got a big, you know, big stiffy about having the game. Oh, Horseman deck, oh, it's the best deck ever. $300, okay, sold. They got too excited over a deck just because <laughs> of that. You know how many Horseman decks are out there now? Uh, yeah, the it's Horseman ridiculous. decks do not fetch the big bucks anymore. People have come to their senses unfortunately, because I have one. I'd love to sell anyone out there. It's got a bait and switch in it. Give me 300. It's yours. Yeah, I think you should buy a tiny deck. Absolutely yeah, buy a tiny deck. I, I think definitely, especially since this, I don't even play it. This is this is, this is is an unbiased plug for Tiny's deck. Please Thank buy you. that. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, you bet. But, you know, so anyway, um, that's why I don't like the Archon. Because I, I hate, even when I play Thrones, I hate playing the same deck over and over and over again. I mean, there's one thing to craft a deck, but that's when you keep adding and subtracting cards to it. I mean, if you play through a Keyforge deck, you know, two, three times, you know what's in the deck. You know what the best cards are. You know what you hope to see. So, you know, you don't have to keep playing it over and over to craft it because everything's already in it. You know, you can't add any more ingredients to your suit, you know? So it's yeah. just going to play the way it is. So I don't like Archon because everyone's bringing their same deck, their best deck. Um, maybe your deck matches up against it. Maybe you don't. Um, uh, if it now if we ever get to the turn the tournaments, we haven't played this one yet. So that appeals to me a lot is you bring a deck, everyone brings their crappy deck or whatever deck they feel is not that great, and you play with other people's and you get wins. Your deck gets wins, and you get wins for playing with other people's decks. That seems like a lot of fun. That seems like more of a test of skill. That seems like a lot of fun, and I like that format. And I would like best of three for sealed. So. Going back to answer your question, do I want to sit around and play a tournament like that all day? Uh, the competitive player in me says yes. The competitive player wants to compete in something like that where it is more of a test of skill. Where the casual Keyforge player, which I think we have a lot of those too, um, you know, all right, let's just go play best of one and see who wins, whatever. Okay, you won. Oh, my gosh, you're so amazing. I, I don't know how you pulled that off. You are, How did you come up with that it's crazy combination of playing um, you know, three dust pixies and a full moon and a honey witch and uh, and key charge. Wow, you are amazing. You are the best player ever. Now, if you walk away from a tournament, you do that stuff and you think that about yourself, you don't really understand the game. I just like, hey, great, you got the cards in your deck. Good job. Okay, moving on. Next game. You know, so that's how I feel about tournament play right now. Yeah, I am. I'm of two minds because one of the reasons I'm playing Keyforge is because I'm looking for a more casual game that still has a lot of depth during the school year that I can really still enjoy almost like a side game that's my main game because I just don't have the time. But then whenever we play actual tournaments, I'm like, oh my goodness, the competitor in me breaks out, right? And it's like, I want this to be more competitive. I don't want to just open a sealed deck and look at it and go, on the John Bruno scale of rating one to five, this is about a three. Um, as long as no one gets a high four or five, I might be able to win. And then someone gets a four and a half, and I know I'm in huge trouble. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I mean that is how I feel. I'm, 
I love competitive tournament play of games. I mean, that's why you and I played Destiny. Destiny was a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, we played Game of Thrones. We, you know, we, it's a lot of fun. I, I still love both of those games. It's just that, you know, I don't have the, I don't want to spend the money to keep up with Destiny as a CCG. And I really am not excited where Game of Thrones is at in 2.0. I liked 1.0 better. And so they're not, they don't have their current, I mean, Destiny, I would still play if I wanted to spend money in the cards. But I, I like having that competitive event in my life. And I'm going to do the same with you. This is a nice, you know, it feels, it, it scratches that itch. It's just that I can't get the same excitement out of it that I had playing the games where, you know, I feel like you really can outplay your opponent or you can outbuild your opponent or outthink your opponent. This game. I mean, you both make mistakes. Your opponent who makes it might not have the experience to know when they should select a new faction or play with the ones on the table or whatever it is. But in general, like I said before, with the ceiling and the floor of each deck, that's still already there. And some decks will never beat other decks, no matter who plays them. If Richard Garfield could play it, and he would still lose with the deck that I got in draft last night. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. Or Thursday night, Thursday night, but but it is. A, I mean, it's a it's a great casual game, and I love the yeah. fact that what is the number one thing that you and I hated the most about this about card games? Sorting, uh. building deck, organizing your stuff. I don't yeah. have to do any of that stuff with this deck. So that's why, because you are not taking the time to really build your deck, and like I said before, crafting your deck. Because you're not taking that time, this game's always going to have a certain place it's at and if you're comfortable with that place you're gonna have fun if you're not comfortable with that place you're gonna you're gonna get frustrated but i am comfortable with that place i don't mind having this casual game to play that sometimes i'll do well with sometimes i'm gonna suck but i don't care i bought all these decks i want to play with all these decks i don't want to buy you know 200 decks so i can find the three or four really awesome decks and you know what did i do with all the other decks what am i doing with them i want to play with them so i don't care if i play and i get you know, like you and I played a bunch of casual games yesterday. I don't feel like any of the decks I played are my best decks. You won every single game we played. You know, I mean, I want to see, I want to flesh those decks out and see if there there are things in there that I liked about the deck that I could have fun with that deck. And if not, I'm, then I guess I don't play it. But I want to give every deck at least a chance. Yeah, I think that's um, a difference between you and I and other people. It's It's this balancing of like, do you want newness every time and try them all or do you want to isolate a set of decks you like like some of the, i have like a subset of about eight decks that i play some of them because they're really strong like you said others because they have a combination of cards i like and it loses every single time but i still enjoy playing it and do you really want to find all the nooks and crannies and master that deck or do you want to have like that new flavor experience every time and I think I'm more in the wanting to master decks. And I think that really frustrates you that other people are in that mode as well. And a lot of people are choosing to master only their best decks. And you're like, no, I want to play this deck. I haven't even looked at it. I don't know how good it is. And if you're going to play a great deck, we really are not going to have a lot of fun here. And I, I think that's kind of a, a frustrating spot where I, I want to be able to tell people like, uh, this this deck is rated a two out of five. It's terrible. Do you have a two out of five? You are willing to play. If not, then I guess I just won't play this deck. Yeah. See, I mean, it, it, it does get frustrating, but like, like I told you yesterday, when we're playing. I don't care. All right, deck, <laughs> yeah, let's play it. Let's play a deck. Okay. Uh, right. Let's see. These ten decks here. I haven't opened any of them up yet. Pick <laughs> one. Yeah, I'll pick this one. Okay, let's play it. What's in the deck? I don't know. I'm just gonna shuffle and play it. You know, I can uh, do that. This game, I can't right? Do that. <laughs> I know. I feel like you and Neil should have a tournament where the two of you over like a 24 hour period buy 50 decks and just play them all blind and then see who has the most wins at the end of the day. But see, it would be the most fun ever because yeah. Neil thinks I do. You guys would both <laughs> love it. Everyone would love watching it too. You'd have at least like 20 Twitch followers. It'd be amazing. Well, 20? <laughs> That's like, it's like 18 more than Tiny Grimes. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, Keyforge doesn't <laughs> tend to bring in a pot of Twitch views. <laughs> so, I mean, can I can I like talk about the rating I did for my decks? Um, we're gonna we come back getting... to that in a couple of minutes. I, I want to talk okay. about something else real quick, and then we're gonna move to ratings. 
Tiny um, did many ratings. We'll get to those, though. But uh, I, I, it's just like personal things how you rate your decks. But go yeah. ahead. Uh, I want to talk real quick since we're talking about organized play and stuff and you were talking about tournaments. Uh, there was a video where there's actually going to be more high-level tournaments than there have been for other games. When each set comes out, they're going to have store champs for those sets. And I guess I want to just sort of bounce this question off you is, how do you feel about that? For, like, if there's a store champ in a week, are you going to hone in on one deck maybe at least for a week and really master it? Or, like, what's your mindset about store champs? Are you not going to play in them? Are you going to play in them assuming you're going to lose because everyone else is going to be bringing their best deck and you don't want to? Like, what's your approach going to be? Well, I think I want to play in the store championships because I only have, like, you know, 40 different deck trackers. I probably need, I mean, chain trackers. I probably need some more of them. <laughs> you know, so. That's fair. We <laughs> that's all need hard, more chain trackers. Thing, yeah. That's the hard thing about the uh, the game is for FFG to make good prizing for yeah. OP that's going to make people want to come out and play. I mean, how many tournaments in the past have people played because, oh, my gosh, have you seen that sweet alt art? Oh, I'm going to go play. You can't really do alt art cards. The only card you could do that for is a house card or a chain card. I mean, yeah, they started putting out those little mini stun, which I do like the mini stun ones and power yeah. token. But in general, I mean, what can they do? I mean, I think what they really should do is, there. you know how many people have made some amazing uh, laser cut, you know, tokens, obviously, and deck boxes. The yeah. deck boxes, somebody has a deck box out there that, you know, basically unfolds into two pieces when you put it back on. There's an opening across the top that shows what the name of the deck is, and across the bottom that shows the three factions that seems pretty sweet why can't ffg do that they probably could they just don't think of those things sometimes you know uh otherwise we want to see them make um you know maybe better chain to counters or uh damage uh, it may not like these stupid coins that they have right now those like like you said and it's the best way to describe them. if anyone's seen the little one and three or three and five sided coins they have the the ones that are opposite numbers on different sides that look like gray Chuck E. cheese tokens um, actually, that's not true because Chuck E. Cheese tokens look better. But um, <laughs> oh, jeez, yeah. So you know, uh, they got to make something that's more appealing to people to bring people out. So to you know, answer your question, will I go play in store championships? Yeah, if I'm not doing anything, what the heck? I don't care. Well, do I expect my deck to do well? I, you know, who knows what my best deck is? Will I give it a shot? Sure, why not? The yeah. prize support, you know, the everyone all participation stuff appeals to me more i know it's going to happen though because we live in such a large area that we'll probably have 15 20 store championships that we could possibly go to if we were able to attend every single one of them you'll see the same people there with the same decks and if the ones they found their deck that's mm -hmm. got that high ceiling they're bringing that every single time yep and it just sucks you know that's that's the one thing that's different you yeah. know because i all the other games you play yeah, you bring your deck, but you still tweak it every tournament. You make some changes to it. You can't do that with this this game. You're stuck with the best thing you were able to purchase. Or worse, if you're going out in the secondary market and buying decks, you really have a problem, in my opinion. Because mm -hmm. if you're buying a deck to compete competitively, I mean, in some way, it's not. It's not. What I'm going to say, it's not, but it feels like cheating, you know? Mm -hmm. Um I, I, if you're buying a deck because, oh, my gosh, that name's in the deck title, I love that. That's cool. Uh, you know, I, I don't mind spending money. If I bought a deck that had, like, my name in it, I saw some there, there were some decks that said Mathlean in it, which has been my old user board name for, you know, almost uh, 18 years on the FFG boards. So, so I just saw there were some decks out there that were in Mathlean in it. I'd love to buy a deck that said Mathlean in it just to have. You know, I have one that says... Um, something about um, uh, the amazing calculus teacher or something like that as a deck title. And that's really pretty cool because um, I'm a teacher and I've taught calculus, you know. So those things are cool. Spending money to buy those decks that just sound cool to you, that's pretty neat. But just buying one to play competitively at this game seems silly to me. Yeah, it's tough though, right? Some people are treating this like, any other competitive card game and they want to have the best deck they can possibly get and since they can't build it themselves they're going to go out and buy it so as that guy who who usually is ultra competitive i totally get it but it i agree it see like it's a lot to do for this game especially right now well, there's so little on the line but john i do want to address something um you said everyone's going to bring the same decks to store championships 
And the cool thing is if people get chains for doing that, that could that could shake it up a little bit, right? But but then again, they could just jump to their second best deck, which has the exact same cards and it's just a tiny bit weaker. Well, again, all my statements I made, you know, I just want to stay, say that they're all based on everyone just playing decks as is. Mm -hmm. um, again, I love Fantasy Fight games. I've loved their games, played them for a long time, but I also know how very slow they are to do things that they say they'll do. Gotcha. And the, the possibility of chains does I think impact all that stuff I said and I think it could make it more balanced or more let's say fair at least um, play playing format you know whatever whatever tournament format you're using but as long as they keep things unchained and they're really not raiding the decks um, which I got I really think it will take them a while to do I mean we'll play through store championship season before you ever see those chain the, the chains be put on decks i believe hmm. and that's not that's not gonna be fun i'm I'm, so. I'm i'm very pessimistic about ffg enforcing the things they say they're gonna enforce we'll see they could surprise me but just okay. from you know it's like you've been burned too many times but then before in the past and then making promises they don't follow through on i i will definitely agree with that this game seems different this app it seems like they're actually have been proactive right they had the app ready release day They've said these. Are, this is the discovery period, and then they're going to move to the chained events that are coming up soon. I actually think they're going to do it. I think um, the chained events are the next set of events, and they will have chains, and then after that, they'll have a quick store championship season before the next set. I hope so. I mean, I really do. I think that anything that makes the the competitive scene more fun and and balanced sounds great. Tiny Grimes, the optimist. Who would have thought? Yeah, really. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we should move to the next topic of the day, which is deck rating. So um, what I'm actually going to do today is I have a pack here. And I'm going to open it. And we're going to put it in uh, the Keyforge app so you can follow along looking at it. Uh, and we're going to talk about how we rate decks. And, um, yeah. Uh, but before we do that, we, we have to thank some people from Patreon. Uh, Shoeshine, Tyson, Chisel, Citizen X. Thank you so much to you all for being so generous and supporting the channel. All right, John, uh, do you want to do an introduction to this, or should we just open it up? Um, do you want to? Oh, I'll, I'll tell what I, I'll say what I did. Okay, say what you did. All right. So I was like, um, I decided, okay, eventually I had 35 decks. What am I going to do with these decks? Um, I pull a deck out. What does it happen in? How do I? So I just wanted to have a way to be able to put all my decks together and look at them. So what I did was I created a spreadsheet. I mean, very similar to other stuff people have out there, but where I wrote the deck name down and I put the deck into uh, burger tokens, which is what we're going to do. So it's easy to look at without even opening the pack. I didn't even have to open up the pack, but I took from there and I took data from there. And I marked down the number of commons, uncommons, rares, ca uh, specials, and mavericks in a deck. Then that was just for deck keeping purposes. See, see, you know, see what I have there. But anyway, then I also went through and wrote down the number of cards that produced amber, the number of uh, creatures, artifacts, upgrades, and and action cards. And um, then I wrote little notes about like cards I thought that were key cards from the set or from that from that pack. And then I gave every deck a rating from one through five. One would be, no way would I ever play this in tournament. Uh, you know what I'm going to do with all the ones and put them in a box with all the ones? I'm going to teach people how to play. Let's just pull them out of there and play those decks. Oh, I like that. So I still, yeah. Uh, like I'm going to teach a friend tomorrow how to play the game. We're going to pull some decks out of there. We're all playing one level one decks, in my opinion. I'm, when mm. I'm done, I'm going to give them a couple. I'll say, here, take these decks. Keep these decks. Dang. So here's Look at that. Right. John Community Organizer. I like it. Oh, yeah. Uh, twos. Twos are just a level above the one. Um, you know, I'll play it a little bit more. I, it might be, it might go down to a one, but it's never going to be really be a three. But that's what a two would be. Okay. Uh, a three. Three, the deck is right in the middle for me. I mean, it could, you know, bounce up to a four and be a little bit better. It could drop down to the two, where it's kind of that, you know, crappy deck, but not as crappy. <laughs> The uh, fours 
are the decks that I think are playable, tournament level. I mean, I would play them in the tournament. I have not marked a single deck as a five yet. You have to work your way from a four to get to a five. Mm. So I'm playing my fours. Five would be obviously a deck I really want to play in a tournament. Four, four I'm going to have to play until I find a five. I have not marked a single one of my decks a five yet. Okay. So that's my, that's my rating system. I like it. Um, according to your rating system, I also don't have a five yet. I have maybe five fours that I'm pretty happy with, and anytime I'm tempted to move them to a five, one of their big flaws gets exposed, <coughs> and it's like, yep, this is definitely not a five deck. I, I feel like I can win tournaments with my fours, but they're not decks that I feel like are dominant decks where I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to win this? Hold on. Let me get my bag of decks and get out the five. I just don't have one of those yet. Exactly. That's how I felt with every single one of my fours I played. I haven't played all my fours yet, but that's what I feel so far. John, quick, quick aside, I just got a text that says that tournament last night where they announced that it was three rounds, they ran a fourth round after we left. <laughs> what? So I don't know what's... Actually, I don't know if it's saying that they ran a fourth round or it said it called for a fourth round. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but it might, <laughs> we might not get any prizes, John. We might have left too yeah. early. That's probably what happened. I would bet that <laughs> if I was betting, uh... a betting person, I would bet that, you know, the way the prize money fell did not please some of the people that were left over, so they Ooh. demanded to have a fourth round. Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to move on. I'm just going to give you that information. And I think it's time to open this deck, and you can tell me where you would put it, John, in your rating system. I'm going to do a little bit more intricate of a rating system and say 1 to 10, and I'll tell you where it is on mine. So let's start with the houses. Okay. Um, it has, as you can see here, Untamed, Brobnar, and Mars. And the, the, the name is TZ Jarp Crank of the Moribund Vents. And while I put this into the Keyforge app, why don't you tell me what you would be hoping to see in a deck that has Brobnar, Untamed, and Mars? Um, tell me how to spell a deck first, so I can, I can punch it up before I look. Uh, look no, 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 it. you just got to tell me first what, what you would want to see in a deck like that. Right, so Untamed, I would hopefully, of course I want to have Keyforge. Okay, I agree. Yeah, I would like some better creatures um, in in there, which have they have some good ones. I mean, the Hunting Witch, mm -hmm. you definitely want to have. Witch of the Eye, I wouldn't mind having. Dust Pixie. Uh, Dust Pixie for sure, or the Dew Fairy. Those are good ones. Regrowth. Uh, I really think. Pardon me. Regrowth. Regrowth. Yeah, sure. But in creature wise, I I really like Alicor and Snuffle Gator. Um, cards with skirmish are good. Yeah. Uh, mm, those both are great cards to have in your deck. Uh, let's see another big. Let's see a big guy. You know who There's I want to see? Great... I want to see Murmuk. I love oh, Murmuk yeah. or Murmuk. Murmuk is good. Yeah. Of course, of course. He's yeah. so annoying because they're like, yeah, I got the six and you don't have any steel in your deck. And you're like, I don't, but I got her mook. <laughs> yep. Um, the, the, what's the other witch? The Chota Hazi. Yeah. Yep, yeah, basically. she's really good. She's key better Forge than Keyforge because she does Keyforge and then she stays in the work because she's a character. Yeah, exactly. You know, so those are, those are some good creatures. Uh, the bears, the bears, the ancient bears with the, with the, with the bear flutes always fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lost in the Woods for me is maybe my favorite removal the, card these days. Yeah, Lost in the Woods is, is a really strong card. I mean, that is a really strong card, especially in, in this faction. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Brobnar. Um, I want to see stuff like Anger and Bumpsy, where he just comes in and makes you lose one, especially in this deck where it doesn't have shadows. I want to have some way of controlling amber maybe a, a loot the bodies with a coward's end something like that i love punch these are the brobnar cards i'd like to see and then that's some big giant bodies would be nice oh yeah well it's one thing that you hope you're going to get out of here like creature wise you have so many good brobnar creatures um my favorites that i've enjoyed so far are the ones that the character who um comes into play and readies a character and fights that character. So I, I think it's Ganger Chieftain. Mm. Ganger Chieftain sounds right. So I've yeah. had game. I've had games with um, Ganger Chieftain, the Fire Spitter, the one that before you fight does a damage to everybody. 
So you can play the fire spitter, then you play the ganger chieftain, then you you know ready the the fire spitter, and he also has an armor, but he does a damage to all your opponent's creatures before he attacks. And then he attacks somebody and Whoa. potentially somebody. I just noticed but, the casual play app online, and the the app online now has a casual play wins and losses function. Oh, cool. And a notes function, so you can put in stuff. Ooh, this app is coming along fast, man. I'm, I'm impressed. All right, well, let's look at the deck itself. Uh, you can look it up, too, John. You can look it up at home. It's If you're watching on the video, I have it right here. It's, um, let's see, put in Moribund Vents, M-O-R-I-B-U-N-D, Vents, two words. I think that'll work. I'm going to put mine into the Burger Tokens uh, Analyzer as well. What I like so much about this analyzer is they're doing with this exactly what I was doing on my own, taking forever going through and cataloging all this. And I just use it as a cataloging system. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to start with Untamed because I just want to see if it's got key charge. It does not have key charge. So I'm immediately less happy with the deck. It also doesn't have Chari, Oza, or whatever the other key charge on the stick is. So it is unable in untamed to make keys out of faction. It has Snuffle Gator, which you wanted. Um, it has Nephilim Seed, which is really good. Yeah. Uh, it has two Loss in the Woods, which I love, and two Nocturnal Maneuvers, and a Vigor. So that's a lot of um, Amber-producing cards that are really strong. It's got the Mighty Tiger, which I like a lot. It does uh, four damage to an enemy creature when he comes into play. Right. So, it, so the Untamed to me feels strong, but missing some of the key cards to make it really strong. What do you think? No, I agree with you. I do. I, I'm, well, we have to talk about the creature base. I mean, I always start looking at the creature base. Mm, it, okay. like no Hunting Witch either. That's a bit disappointing. So I'm, I'm going to say overall... The creature base is kind of disappointing. The events are good, but we're missing key charge. Right. All right. Let's let's move on to Brobnar. We'll skip over Mars for the moment. Um, Brobnar has two cowards end, so it's got mass removal. So that's really good. Uh, I guess I should say when I raid a deck, there's three or four major things I'm looking at. One is, does it have mass removal? Does it have... Uh, disruption, whether that's steal or capture or remove uh, in some way. Can it make a key out of the key forging phase? And can it have like an amber burst play where it gets a lot? So we, we can't make a key out of phase so far, but we got two mass removal cards, which is pretty awesome. Well, I always look for that too. I mean, that's one of the things that will take lower a deck down. You have to have something that is going to affect creatures on the board. Um, we got two copies of Anger, which is also really good. Being able to drop in some giant creature and then do that or, you know, use your Snuffle Gator and his Skirmish when it's not, uh, when you're using Brobnar. These are all really strong plays with Anger. It also has a guy you were talking about, the Ganger Chieftain. Another way, uh, to cheat and fight with a different person. Love that. I really like Tremor. Um... In many ways, there are times when stun is better than removal. So, for instance, if your opponent has uh, the bear flute, it's way better to stun a bear than to kill all the bears because they just come right back otherwise. And exactly. stun, stun makes it so they never want to declare that house, John. I've had people have, like, five dudes on the board from a house, and they're just like, screw it, I'm never going to call that house again. They're all stunned. And I'm like, uh, okay, that's, that's great. That is good. There's a, there, the other card I really like in here that also is a, affecting a game board is uh, the Nocturnal Maneuvers. Yeah. Because that fatigues, th exhausts three characters. And so you play that card, and it does the same thing, exactly what you're saying. I mean, they, they just don't pick that house, even though, you know, for the, for, for the next turn. So mm -hmm. it's down for one turn, but it's still a pretty strong card. Yeah. I agree. And it has a little bit of um, amber control with Lomar Flame Fist, who I hadn't seen before, actually. Play, if your opponent has seven or more, they lose two. So that's kind of cool. It's got War Drummer, who lets you return your other Brobnar guys. 
So you can right. combo him with Ganger Chieftain to have more fighting. You can combine him with Earthshaker, who says destroy each creature with power three or lower. So that's kind of crazy. Um, you could play him one turn, bring him back to your hand, threaten to be able to play him again if they you know, play like some Shadows guys that are really little. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of like the Brobnar part. Take that Smarty Pants looks like about the worst rare in the game. Have you seen this card? Oh yeah, it's a funny, it's a funny deck for sure. A funny deck name, card name. Yeah, I love the card name, but it's Steel Two. If your opponent has three or more Logos cards in play, this is like the most situational card I've ever seen. <laughs> Thankfully, it gives you an ammo. so it's not garbage. Yeah. But I like it. And and Smash is also a great card. Comes in stun a guy, combo with War Drummer. So I really like the Brobnar. Um, the Untamed is is okay. So it's going to come down to Mars. Can Mars carry us through? And just glancing at the three Biomatrix back, backups, I'm, uh, I'm a little leery about that one. Well, let's take a look. Uh, so we do have Key Abduction, which is our way to make a key out of the key phase. I haven't actually been able to pull this off. I don't have this in a lot of decks. How about you, John? Have you ever gotten key abduction to work? Uh, return each Mars creature to its owner's hand. Then you may forge a key at plus nine the current cost, reduced by one for each card in your hand. Well, no, I've never had that to work. I've had it before. I've never had that to work. But I'm looking at the fact that it only has four Mars creatures, and that's kind of disappointing. <laughs> but three are John Smith. John Smith. You ready a non-agent Mars creature, but John right. Smith is an agent, right. so he can only ready Vizma Thinktron. Right. One, they can, uh, they can only be one Mars person. Who, who at least, uh, will let you archiving your friendly creatures from play. <laughs> so you can keep archiving the John Smith if you wanted to. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that. but That is quite the nombo right there. <laughs> yes, really. That and soft, soft Landing is a great card. I yeah. love soft landing. I yeah. love soft landing. You know, and it's um it's a great card. It's just that there's nothing really here that makes you excited to play soft landing. I mean, you've got yeah four upgrades, right? You've got four characters, and you only have one artifact. I mean, so I'm going to play that soft landing is going to make one of your three John Smiths and your Ven Venzma Thinkdrome have uh come in and just be able to be used so yeah. that's uh, unfortunate that has another nambo with the crystal hive which is for the remainder of the turn gain one each time a creature reaps well you have to declare mars to use this and you only right. have four right. creatures in all of mars right oh my um mating season is kind of interesting shuffle each mars creature into its opponent's deck each player gains oh. one for each creature but only again the... nambo yeah. So, yeah, I feel like I feel like the deck was like teetering into maybe being like it was a three, maybe even a four had Mars gone the best case scenario. But uh, I don't know. What do you? Th I think this deck might be a two. Maybe it's yeah. a low three. Uh, I don't think it's a three. Yeah, uh, I don't think so either. Not enough creatures to get to a three, but I, I think maybe I would put it at a two. I mean, you got enough stuff to mess with your opponent, and the other thing we have to do when we look at it is when we put it into burger tokens, you have to look at, because one the thing that can sustain you, depending on whether your creatures are great or not and how many you have, mm -hmm. is how many cards you play that produce amber, because that's yeah. still the thing you can do. I mean, I have yep. one game, and I have lost games where I've only played like four or five creatures the entire game. It's just that all my other cards did stuff, and they made amber while they were doing stuff. Like, if you have cards that effectively affect your opponent, you know, like Lost in the Woods and Nocturnal Maneuver, and slow them down, even though you don't have anything on the table and you're getting an amber every time you play that card, you can still just generate enough amber so at the beginning of your turn you make a key and they you slow them down because they wasted their turn putting these creatures out. Yeah. I think um, this deck does a good job of showing why Burger Tokens is only the starting point. Because if right. you just looked at burger tokens, you'd go, 15 cards with amber is pretty dang good. Right. It has tons of removal, including two mass removal cards. It has a way to cheat a key out, out of faction, or I mean out of the key forging turn. Um, it has several ways to house cheat, like we already looked at with Brobnar. It has some amber control. 
you'd be tempted to say this is a high three borderline four deck just from like those base stats but then when you actually get into the nuts and bolts of the deck i think that's misleading oh very much so especially since three of the cards are biomatrix backup <laughs> you know and uh, uh that does not help you <laughs> that, that was an unfortunate ruling for those of you who have not seen this if you look right in the rule book itself it talks about this card it says when uh, this creature is destroyed, you may put this creature in its owner's archives. Well, the first the, the person who is on the play gets to decide. So if they kill your guy, they most likely will not decide that you should put him in your archives. They will probably put him in the discard pile. Yeah. And in this deck, it's going to be John Smith, who doesn't get to ready anybody anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, bottom line is this one seems like it's not great. Um I'm, this, I'm planning to do this segment each week. If you would like to purchase this deck and support the show, go ahead and contact me uh, in a, a variety of ways. Let me know how much you would like to um, donate to the show to purchase TZ Jarp Crank of the Moribund Vents. Uh, according to the John Bruno rating scale, he gives it somewhere in the two range. According to the Tiny Grimes rating scale, I haven't quite figured it out. Um, I'd say it's like around the five to six. I might give it a six because it's got, it's got a lot going for it. It just has problems. All right. That's the end of that. Um, so John, I have one more quick topic I want to broach with you. I think I know what you're going to say. The Crucible is a, a pretty good place to play online. It, it has some ui quibbles for me personally but it, it, i've gotten some games in on there but there's been a lot of talk about people just net decking decks that they don't even own like for instance the one turn kill deck and just playing them do you have any thoughts on that uh, do you have any suggestions to our viewers should you net deck decks to play on there well i if i'm playing on there i want to play because i want to learn my decks more so i would only want to play my deck or if you had a local player i could see doing it if you were going to play in the tournament and you're pretty sure that's the deck they're bringing all the time <laughs> i want to play play with it yeah so i can learn how to beat it because i mean i always felt that way in game of thrones when i played somebody and somebody would say to me hey can you look at my deck and tell me what you think your deck i'm like let me play a game with it you know i play a couple games then now i get a feel for what the deck does and understand where its strengths and its weaknesses are so um, I could see doing that. Do I think there's anything wrong with that? No, I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. The only part that's, that's wrong, in quotation marks, would be people saying, yeah, this is my deck. No, it really is. I mean, big deal. <laughs> yeah. The deck is on there. You play any decks on there. It's out there. It's public domain. Okay. You know, you own the deck. You're the only one that gets to play with it physically in person. You put it on that. It's on the, uh, the Keyforge uh, data pool out there. It's everybody's deck, you know? Okay. So... Um, if somebody wants to play it on the Crucible, they play it on the Crucible. I mean, this is a freaking online casual game anyway. It's one of those things where you can come out and be anybody who you want to be. Nobody even knows has to know who you are. That's yeah. the that's what internet trolls are all about. So I'm this gonna... time, when you're playing Brobnar and you put down the card troll, when you say, I play a troll, <laughs> you may be literally playing mm. a troll. Okay. Um, I'm going to disagree with you slightly. I I'll agree with most of what you said, that when I play on the Crucible, it is exclusively to try to get some games in with, like you said, I've got 30 decks now, especially those ones and twos where I might not want to sleeve it up and take it to a shop. It's nice and easy just to be like, boom, here's my two. Let's see how bad it is. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe the John Bruno system, I, I misevaluated and it's actually a four and I'm just, I'm just learning that I'm bad at evaluating decks. I think that's useful. Um, I also agree that like, if you want to try a specific deck to, like if someone says this horseman deck is broken it's not a bad idea to try it what i'm not a fan of is this um you i'm like so competitive i want to win at all costs so i'm going to play the one turn kill deck that i don't own over and over and over on the crucible knowing that no one can beat it and making everyone hate the game i think you're doing the game a disservice at that point i don't i don't think you're adding anything and I don't think it's helping you because you know the outcome already. Now, if you find someone and you say, like, hey, 
do you want to try to beat the one turn kill deck? That's different. Like I found someone and who had the one turn kill deck and they said, I've got this deck. It's a one turn turn kill deck. This was weeks ago. And I was like, I don't believe that. Let's try it. And we went one and one, but I was able to practice against it. And that was great. But if you're just a random casual person being like, I want to try my two out. I'm going to join a random game. They're like, good news. I stole someone's one turn kill deck. I don't think you're doing anyone a favor there, including yourself. No, I agree completely with all that. So I don't really feel like we disagreed. I'm just saying okay. when I play with somebody else's deck, I'm playing it because I want to learn how to play against it. I'm not playing. I mean, it's out there. And I, it really, as long as it's out there, anybody can play any deck. But the reason why you're doing it shouldn't be just because I feel like being a jerk and I want to I want to be the best ever and tell everyone I'm so amazing. So I'm going to go find that best deck ever and play. What are you winning? Okay, congratulations. You won an online game. What'd you win? People think you're amazing now? No, they still <laughs> just think you're a jerk. You know, you didn't really win anything. You lost you everything. Play? Yeah, you wanted to respect. You lost it all, buddy. I'm sorry. Okay, you're playing with somebody else's deck. Yeah. If you want to borrow somebody's deck and play with it, you know, that's one thing because what you're going to do with it is something else. Are you doing it because you want to learn how to play against it? Are you doing it because maybe they asked you to try it out? See what you think of it. That's yeah. totally different. Just playing it because I want to win every single Crucible game because I'm the best ever. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think we agree to the most part. I might, might stop with the last part, but that's all right. That's all right. No, I, I believe, I'll go with the idiot. Okay. So, John, uh, thanks so much for coming on. It's uh, it's nice to finally get a world champion on the show since I'm the world champion of nothing. Nothing. But... You are the world champion of my heart. Oh, okay. At least I got that going for me. That's yeah. that's better than any trophy that I could potentially have that says world champion on it. Um, you bet. So, John, is is there a place people can find you online, or should they just look in SoCal and uh, you know go to a shop, and you'll you'll sure to be there? Um, I'm nowhere online. Uh, I will see you, but you won't see me. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, yeah, whatever store I go play at, I love playing at. Uh, the realm over in Brea, Glenn, is, Glenn does an awesome, awesome job with his shop, and playing over there is fun. Uh, I will be over at Game Time on Monday nights, some nights, and uh, if there's anybody that actually shows up or people play uh, in the wonderful dungeon over there, and uh, like going over to the Game Hub over in Comic Bug over in Manhattan Beach, um, that's a good place to play. And Dice House down in Fullerton is always the best. All right. And uh, you can sometimes find John trolling me on my stream at uh, Tiny Grime, Twitch Tiny Grimes. He'll he'll sometimes come in as like Grimy Tines or something like that, some trolly name, and, and troll me for a while. It's always fun. It doesn't sound like me at all. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> uh, all right, so you can follow me on Twitter, Tiny Grimes dot whatever. I don't even know. Tiny Grimes Games, I think I'm on there. You can find me around. And uh, thanks so much for stopping by, Archons, and uh, we'll see you all next time.